the oil-rich monarchies of the Persian Gulf have relied for decades on the promise of protection by the United States military, a commitment sealed by the rollback of the 1990 invasion of Kuwait and reinforced by a half-dozen American military bases that sprang up around the region. Now that commitment is facing its most serious test since the first Gulf War, an attack last Saturday by a swarm of at least 17 missiles and drones that crippled Saudi Arabia's most critical oil installation and temporarily knocked out 5% of the world's oil supply. Washington and Riyadh blamed Iran, despite its denials, and President Trump threatened that the United States was locked and loaded. Yet despite months of such bravado, Mr. Trump has been hesitant to take military action that might risk an expanded conflagration. For better or worse, such a muted response could signal another turning point for the region. It is enormous, said Gregory Gauze, a scholar of the region at Texas A&M University. This is the most serious challenge since the invasion of Kuwait to the status of the United States as a great power that would protect the free flow of energy from the region, and unless there is a big change in the response from the Trump administration I think Gulf leaders will start to question the value of that security commitment. Confounding expectations on all sides of the Persian Gulf, the attack and its aftermath have laid bare a cascade of revelations about the regional balance of power. The stunning success of the attack has shown that billions of dollars in Saudi military spending has left the kingdom's central industry vulnerable, and it has demonstrated to the world that the increasing availability of low-flying cruise missiles and drones may have rendered many other defense systems perilously obsolete. It has also shown the world a new side of Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, the hard-charging and often impulsive de facto ruler of the kingdom, he, too, has been forced in this case to back away from immediate retribution against his nemesis, Iran. If Iran carried out the attack directly, as Washington and Riyadh say, then it has taken a brazen step beyond its familiar strategy of working through allied militant groups to strike at its foes, evidently surprising the White House. Seeking to exact a price from the United States for its sanctions on Iranian oil sales, Tehran may also now be emboldened to carry out further attacks, calculating that President Trump will balk at another war in the region. The attack on Saudi Arabia was just the latest in a string of recent attacks carried out by Iran or a proxy including attacks on oil tankers and the downing of an American drone with little or no cost to Iran. And President Trump, focused on his re-election, has so far shown himself less willing to match Iran's escalation than his ferocious tweets about obliteration and the official end of Iran had suggested. He recently fired the adviser most hawkish on Iran, John R. Bolton, the former national security adviser. And instead of emphasizing the traditional American interest in the free flow of oil, he appears to have returned to a view he espoused before his election Saudi Arabia should fight their own wars, as he wrote in a tweet in 2014. Sign up for the weekly at war newsletter to receive stories about duty, conflict and consequence. That Iran would seek in some way to attack Saudi oil production, though, was hardly unexpected. Experts had predicted for months that the Trump administration's maximum pressure campaign of sanctions against Iran's oil sales would drive it to lash out against the oil production of Saudi Arabia and the Arab Gulf states. The rulers of those Arab states had previously accused President Obama of trying to pull back from the American commitment to the region. They faulted him for negotiating a 2015 deal with Iran to limit its nuclear program in exchange for relief from economic sanctions without further constraining its military or other activities. And the Gulf leaders were outraged when Mr. Obama called off a planned strike against Syria, an Iranian ally, for using chemical weapons against civilians. Now some prominent voices in the Arab Gulf states accuse Mr. Trump of an even greater betrayal. Trump in his response to Iran, is even worse than Obama, said Abdulkalek Abdullah, a prominent political scientist in the United Arab Emirates. Instead of reversing the perceived pullback as Gulf leaders had expected, Mr. Abdullah argued, President Trump let down his Arab partners by failing to respond more forcefully to Iranian aggressions. The United States has said that Iran was behind naval mines that damaged five oil tankers in the Persian Gulf this spring 
and in June Iran boasted of shooting down an American surveillance drone. Yet President Trump did little in retaliation for the tanker attacks and called off a planned airstrike against Iran in response to the downing of the drone. His inaction gave a green light to this, Mr. Abdullah said. Now an Arab Gulf strategic partner has been massively attacked by Iran which was provoked by Trump, not by us and we hear Americans saying to us, you need to defend yourselves. It is an utter failure and utter disappointment in this administration, he added. Mr. Trump has not ruled out a military strike, and senior national security officials met Thursday to refine a list of potential targets should President Trump go that route. Still, he has made clear his opposition to another war, and has ordered new sanctions. But Iran is already under acute economic pressure from the existing sanctions, which use the reach of the American financial system to try to choke off Iranian oil exports anywhere in the world. After pulling out of the 2015 nuclear deal, the Trump administration implemented the sweeping new penalties this spring to try to force Iran to accept a more restrictive agreement. Iranian leaders have denounced the sanctions as economic warfare, and they appear to have orchestrated an escalating series of attacks that threaten the flow of Persian Gulf oil in order to inflict some of the same pain on the United States and Washington's Arab allies. The Iranians do feel cornered, Professor Gauz said, and that is why they appear to be taking more aggressive action than they have in the past. This is an effort by Iran to break out of what they see as strangulation. Defending the administration's policies, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo argued this week that the sanctions may have limited Iran's ability to strike with even more sophisticated missiles or drones. They'd have more complex ones but for the sanctions we put in place that have prevented them from getting access to money, most importantly, but also parts, spare parts, information technology, he told reporters on a trip to Saudi Arabia. Iranian leaders have denied responsibility for the attack last weekend, but at the same time they have openly reveled in its success. It showed the United States that playing with the lion's tail carries serious dangers and if they take action against Iran there will be no tomorrow for them, Brigadier General Hossein Degan of the elite Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corp boasted Thursday, Iranian news media reported. The Iranians may have previously worried about Mr. Trump's threatening tweets and hawkish advisers, said Suzanne Maloney, an Iran scholar at Brookings Institution. But now they see that he is not going to follow through on the bluff that he has carried out on behalf of the American people, she said. Others analysts argued that the alarms from the Persian Gulf about an American retreat were overblown under President Obama and remain so under President Trump. American warships are patrolling the Gulf to help protect tanker traffic. American satellite and surveillance drones patrol the skies. The many large American military bases deter invasions or other large-scale military actions. But President Trump's combination of tough threats and a weak response is the worst of both worlds, argued Jeremy Shapiro, research director of the European Council on Foreign Relations and a former State Department official in the Obama administration. It would be foolish to counter this escalation with an escalation, but it was foolish to get into this position in the first place, he argued leaving the Trump administration to choose between an unwise escalation or a humiliating climb down. Experts on military technology said Saudi Arabia should not be faulted for failing to stop the attack. Like those of other countries, Saudi Arabia's defenses were designed to stop ballistic missiles. This attack appears to have been carried out with low-flying cruise missiles or drones that would escape detection by most radar systems. I don't think that there is any country that could have defended any better than Saudi Arabia did, and that includes the United States, said Peter Roberts, Director of Military Sciences at the Royal United Services Institute, an international research institute. Yet the attack appears to have caused some rethinking by Crown Prince Mohammed. Soon after he was first named Defense Minister, in 2015, he plunged the kingdom into a military campaign in neighboring Yemen to drive from power a faction backed by Iran. Saudi media outlets proclaimed that the prince was asserting the kingdom's power and leading a new drive to roll back Iranian influence. The Iranians, they are the cause of problems in the Middle East, 
but they are not a big threat to Saudi Arabia, the prince boasted confidently to Time magazine in 2018. Saudi Arabia's economy is double the size of the Iranian economy, he said, adding that Iran's army was not among the top five in the Middle East. We will work so that the battle is for them in Iran, and not in Saudi Arabia, he promised on a Saudi news channel. Yet the damage to the oil installation was a painful lesson in the potential costs of a wider conflict, at a time when the Saudi military remains bugged down in Yemen and Prince Mohammed has been pushing for a public sale of the Saudi state oil company. The Saudi decision to call for an international investigation and not immediate retribution may be the choice of a chastened prince, analysts said. I think there has been a calculation that the costs might be too high, said Rebecca Wasser, a senior policy analyst at the Rand Corporation.